proceed again. Um, we will continue with a presentation by Lisanne de Bakker, a friend of us who uh, first studied in Enschede, actually, in the Sur Design. And then she came to Delft for a master in uh, Design for Interaction. And during your studies, you actually already got um, interested in a lot of social and sustainable projects for um, emerging countries like Kenya, uh, Colombia, India. You went everywhere. And uh, she actually also started a sustainable textile brand called We Are Call. But that's not what you're going to talk about today. Um, today she's going to present her project for Proportion, where she's a user-centered designer in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, I'll give the floor to you. Thank you. Sophie said, I studied industrial design and I think for years during my study I loved it but I could never really picture myself working as a designer. I, I didn't really know, I couldn't picture that. Um, and then during my master I started a project in Colombia with Proportion and I remember saying to my mom, like, mom I think for the first time there's a company I can actually, I, I'd love to work here. Um, and luckily four years later I also work there um, and it's a company that um, does uh, human-centered design projects in a very broad sense uh, we work in low-income communities we develop services sometimes business cases um, sometimes research it can be consultancy but we also set up our own projects we have a diverse team also in the countries that we work with so I work for this project at tell something about in Kenya, also with a local team in Kenya. Um, and I will tell something today about um, a project called Agri Vijana, and Vijana means youth in Swahili. And it started um, in January this year, and we're actually at the moment right in the middle of it. So it was interesting for me making this presentation, so a lot of good reflection as well, like what we've done so far, um, and we're still really figuring out like all the all the details so um yeah curious is for your questions and, um so what we're doing is developing actually a business model that um youth can take up so this project was quite complex to begin with because we looked at three different uh, contexts or sectors and we tried to bring those together for us it started with um unemployed youth, since in Kenya it's a huge challenge with um, employment, especially under the youth, which is age up to 35. Um, what you see is that many, many, many uh, youth move from rural areas to urban areas, especially um, since there's also lack of jobs, even if they have studied. So you see that there's a lot of people who go into university of colleges, um, but there are no jobs available. And um, so the main thing was for us, how do you create interesting work also in the rural areas for youth. Next to that, um, farmers are, the average age at the moment is 60. Uh, all over Africa, farmers are still very small scale, often also uh, quite traditional or not applying really the idea of seeing farming as a business, rather just as a way of, right, of surviving or the thing that your parents did. Um, so in order to actually foresee for enough food uh, with the growing population, also the agriculture will have to intensify, will have to produce more. Um, one of the ways is also through a lot of new technologies, or, or new techniques can be information, can be also really physical technologies. So how do you create better access as well for those farmers um, to that kind of improvements? And last but not least, you have a lot of technology providers. A lot of people have developed technologies that are um, also from the Netherlands, other countries over the world, uh, in Kenya itself, that are supposed to help farmers improve their yields, their w whatever. Um, the main challenge often is maybe you've developed a technology, but how does it reach the farmer? Who is using that? Um, sometimes needs a lot of subsidies, funding, grants. What happens if there's not a good business model behind it? 
um, and who actually really benefit from those technologies. Um, so challenges uh, of technology provider often are actually how to implement, how to reach the people they want to reach with those technologies, since that they're not always the one who are implementing or providing the service. They say, we've developed this great technology, now, uh, you know, people, you can start using it. And this doesn't always work. So for us, we try to look at how to make a model that uses the technologies that are available, creates opportunities for youth with those technologies, and helps farmers. So it was kind of an angular, uh, complex start. Um, when we looked at the youth, we were also under trying to understand youth is not a one type of, uh, like not a homogeneous group, so um, what kind of characteristics uh, would fit. Uh, we did all kinds of also sessions, we involved them um, in the field work, and we also tried to learn like, okay, which things um, are we learning now, so while we're going, uh, which kind of characteristics or type of youth fit this type of business, um, and what also other way around can those youth um, bring. So just briefly, three main things that we're seeing now is, um, of course, entrepreneurial. And this is, you know, not everybody's an entrepreneur. So how do you know who fits that kind of um, role? Um, educated, a lot of youth are educated, so in agricultural knowledge. Um, and especially that kind of knowledge you want to bring also to the farmer. So it has a lot of added value if you um, can work with youth who have studied something in agriculture and are actually able to transform that, um, that, that knowledge. And last is actually the easiest, the tech savviness. A lot of youth actually are, especially in Kenya, um, smartphone use under youth is very high and Kenya is one of the most technology advanced, especially in, in that area of Africa. Um, in our project, we looked at um, then the angle of the farmers. So what are their needs and what kind of farmers do we focus on? And as I said, we started very broad, which was definitely a challenge, um, but we managed to narrow down. Uh, in our research, which was, I think, my most fun part, we just went to a lot of farmers uh, back on a motorcycle uh, together with local youth. So they really helped to translate, but also to ask questions and on this picture you see two of the youth that were helping me in an interview so of course I had questions but often they would just you know start asking more and more questions I'd be like what did you say what is she saying trying to <laughs> get also the information um, but in general they were very curious and also able to show from the context itself like what um, what they thought one of the main Conclusions, I see I'm way beyond time, <laughs> was that we started focusing on um, potatoes. This was um, the choice to focus on one value chain with that kind of farmer in the region. And we dived into how does that journey look like? So we're able to go from the beginning of end, how does all the different steps in the process look like? And what are the challenges that people encounter in those moments? Um, two, op two just examples are, for example, that um, I think you can't see the picture very well. The first is a it's poop. <laughs> so it's a moment that people put manure on the field and to, to fertilize the land. Uh, what often happens is that actually the acidity levels of the land are very low. Farmers don't know that. And um, what is needed at the moment as well is lime, which is something that you know, people are not um, applying. Um, and next to that, uh, there's challenges with spraying. A lot of pesticides are sprayed too thick because farmers want to see this layer of, you know, pesticide like nice and good on the leaves, so they know for sure that they've protected their crop. Um, and this this creates, uh, of course, environmental problems, but also is much more expensive for the farmer because they pay more uh, for the chemicals, which are actually one of the most also expensive, you know, biggest costs. Um, so those kind of insights, like every time it's kind of like a puzzle, right? So we were looking for the different angles and trying to make fits. So where do needs meet um, available technology? We started scoping also with available technologies. And if you look into agriculture, there is so incredibly much. There's tons of apps, especially in Kenya, you have a big tech scene. So a lot of people in Nairobi make up like these 
e-marketplace apps or uh, all kinds of, of different things um, to try to make sense of, of what's already there. Um, and together with youth, we were mapping also the different opportunities that could fit the different parts um, in the journey of a farmer. So also to put it in, in time and where they saw the, the potential uh, business opportunities. Mm, this again was reviewed by farmers. So what were they interested in? We just laid out all the options um, and they could write their names, like which one uh, do you want to, uh, to have? Uh, and then we had discussions about those. Uh, Answers. So what we were left with, you don't need to see this image, but we started to, you know, there were so many different options, so many different insights. So how do you make a decision of which kind of services or technologies would fit to make a good business for a youth who is, uh, you know, in the field and, and who wants to uh, uh, <laughs> create a, a business? So what we did was actually map the solutions over the seasonality, since that in farming a lot of different things depend on the time. Um, and what you could see was that most of the solutions came in between uh, after harvesting and before planting. So you buy your seeds then, you, you do your soil testing, you do a lot of different things. But then while the plants are growing, there are barely any kind of services or, or things for the youth to do. And that means that for a couple of months, yeah, you wouldn't have any work. Or, and this is you know, this is the instability of, uh, that a lot of you face, that all the work is um, temporary and uh, you never know what you have tomorrow. So we try to um, take then the one that was kind of in the middle, <laughs> there was there one. So the result was that um, we work with soil testing, which was also the, the partner actually from the beginning, I have to admit, but uh, they are then the technology where you can do instant soil tests. This allows for farmers to know which inputs or if they need lime, like what's their pH. And this is um, a technology that brings it to the farm, so it's a mobile technology. Um, and we're working now with spray, professional spray service providers. So you've got like, these motorized tanks and it's quite, you know, it's actually a laborsome uh, activity. But in order to also uh, improve the use of pesticides, to reduce it, to have the right one, to have uh, good information so that the youth get trained in like, food security, the, uh, recognizing um, you know, the, the actual, f uh, uh, there's also a lot of fake products sold, so, so that they actually know about that. And this they're able to do in the period, like um, during the growing season. So, What's next? We're now uh, piloting this, so there's a ton I can tell you about all the stuff we're trying, what's not working, the challenges, there's a whole bunch, but it's still full in, in the... Yeah, exactly. Um, so sorry, I went a bit over time, but this one last slide, um, it refers also a bit to the previous presentation. I think uh, throughout this whole project, it's been really inspiring for me to see the reality of the agricultural sector and how global it is and how much the Netherlands is also involved because we might not see it but yeah the Netherlands is, is definitely the, like one of the biggest uh, knowledge leaders and, and technology providers if you're in Africa everything is Dutch like <laughs> especially in the potato sector we, we transport <laughs> like crazy <laughs> we set we send our seeds like our small seed potatoes like to Africa so it, it's quite quite crazy so yeah, I wonder, you know, what, what kind of role should we have? Yeah, that was my last question. Like, what role should we have? Like, what is our, you know, what's our point in uh, something for you guys? Okay. And Hello? Hello? That yeah. was it. <laughs> Thank you, Lisanna.